What's up everyone, Tsunami Red here. This video is a walkthrough of what is basically my first parts caster build. This strat with a Tully Bridge. There's a lot that I'm going to cover, so if you prefer to jump to a certain section, they're all listed in the description below. So if you've been following my videos, and if you haven't, do hit that subscribe button down below. But if you have, you know the whole reason I got into this whole guitar modding business is because my end goal was to gain some experience and knowledge in putting together a guitar so one day I could assemble what I would consider to be my ultimate guitar. You've all seen me assemble this DIY tele kit, then upgrade it again from the inside out. And while I've said that I'm very much a tele guy and my ultimate guitar is based on a tele, I'll be honest, I wasn't being totally honest. The truth is, the Tele is my all-time favorite sounding guitar, but it's actually one of my least favorite to play. I find it uncomfortable to hold with the lack of cutaways, the weight isn't the most balanced, necks tend to be fat and wide, and superficially, it took me a while to get used to the look. When it comes to the most comfortable guitars for me, very little beats a Strat. The cutaways and the sleek design allow me to hold the guitar closer to my body and it feels more comfortable, which does help with playing better. It feels comfortable whether I'm sitting down or standing up, some guitars aren't like that. And the weight distribution is more balanced, so I don't get the feeling that the guitar is more weighted on one side. And so I decided to mod a Strat with some of my favorite aspects of the Tele. Now right off the bat, some of you may be thinking, dude, if you want a Tele in the body of a Strat, why not just get a Nashville Strat? Well, there are a few things on traditional strats that I like that a Nashville strat doesn't have. One big thing is the input jack. This could be a whole separate topic to discuss on its own, but basically, I really like the strat style input jack on the body surface where you insert the cable diagonally. On a Nashville strat, you can't install this jack because the tele control plate is in the way. The second thing is the neck pickup. Specifically, I personally prefer a strap pickup in the neck position instead of a tele neck pickup. Again, this could be a separate topic to discuss, but in short, while I do like the tele neck pickup, there's something about the tone of a strap pickup in the neck position that's just hard to resist. That sweet, stingy, warm, bluesy, overdriven tone is one that you just can't replicate on anything else. A tele neck pickup sounds similar, but it's not as... It's not as, well, for lack of a better word, it's not as stingy. And no, you can't just simply swap out the Tele neck pickup for a strap pickup. Both pickups are different sizes and the routing on the body is also different for both pickups. Same goes for the pickguard hole. So because of these two things, it was better for me to use a regular strat as the base guitar for this build. As for things that I like about Tele's that strats don't have, there are two things. The first is the middle position on a Tele. That is to say, both the neck and the bridge pickup running at the same time. I love this sound. It sounds great for clean tones, especially funky rhythms and chorus arpeggios. On a traditional Strat, this pickup position isn't available. The middle pickup on a Strat is not the same as the middle position on a Tele, and they don't sound alike. But, you may have heard about the Gilmore mod, which enables a Strat to have a total of seven pickup positions, including this neck and bridge sound. It's not hard to accomplish with the right electronics, and that's what I implemented on this Strat. The second thing I also implemented, which you can already guess, is a Tele bridge on a Strat. Why is this such a big deal? Well, let me unpack this for you. One of the best things on a Tele, in my opinion, is the Tele bridge pickup. With a clean tone, you get a nice twang from it. When you add just the right amount of overdrive, it's got an even sweeter sounding twangy tone, and when you crank up the gain, it can sound pretty rockin'. It's a world of difference from the bridge pickup on a Strat, which for me, sounds weak and brittle, regardless of whether it's clean or distorted. A significant part of the tele twang is due to the pickup being mounted on the metallic bridge, which plays a part in the overall response of the magnetic vibration between the strings and the pickup. Also, the Tele Bridge pickup has a more slanted angle than the Strat Bridge pickup, which also affects the highs and lows. You can see here I tried lining up the Tele Bridge with the Strat pickguard and yeah, not the same angling. 
This Teletone probably wouldn't be the same without the bridge and while there is a great video on installing a Tele pickup on a Strat as is on the pick guard, I believe this Tele bridge pickup tone would sound more authentic with the bridge. So that's why I decided to implement this and by doing so, that's what makes this a true parts caster. If you're familiar with Tele's and Strats, then you've probably caught on to the obstacles we may encounter in doing this but I'll spell them out right now. First, we need to consider the bridge routing. A Tele pickup needs a larger hole than a Strat, but if the bridge pickup routing happens to be for a humbucker, then it should be okay. And most fenders today have HSH routing by default. Second, a space needs to be cut out on the Strat pickguard. That'll be the biggest mod in this case. Third, a typical Strat has a cavity for the tremolo bridge. If you try putting a tele bridge in place, the holes where you would screw in the tele bridge fall upon that empty space. There are only two ways around this. Either you fill the cavity or work off of a hard tail strap body, which doesn't have this cavity to begin with. But more on this later. For now, let's jump into the first task, which was searching for a guitar, the foundation upon which this build would start from. At this stage, I was going by certain criteria. First, the guitar had to be cheap, but workable and in good condition, preferably a Fender or Squire. Second, the bridge pickup routing had to be able to accommodate a Tele bridge pickup. So the simplest thing would be to find a Strat with a humbucker in the bridge, because it's highly unlikely to come across any Strat with a Tele pickup in the bridge. And third, totally superficial, but the guitar had to have a look and color scheme that I was okay with. Initially, I found a great guitar a 2017 Affinity Strat. It's one of those from a starter kit, but it was a looker. Candy apple red with a black pickguard. Beautiful. And when I played it, oh my god, the neck profile was one that I totally digged. It was sleek and thin. It seriously felt like a shred neck. I took the pickguard off, yep, HSH routing. But this being a typical Strat, it had a trem bridge. Initially, I thought about finding a way to fill the trem cavity. There is this cavity filler sold online, but it only fits American-made strats. This individual on YouTube has done it with epoxy, which is something I've never worked with. Plus, you have to wonder if epoxy can hold up in the long run and can withstand weather changes because wood expands and contracts as seasons change throughout the year. I did consider wood filler as well, but again, there's concerns about long-term sustainability. I even thought about using numerous wood shims to fill the hole. I even consulted a local luthier about this and he basically said, filling this cavity is way more trouble than it's worth. So I carefully reevaluated this whole idea and in the end, I scrapped it and decided to add one more new condition to my list. The strap body needs to be a hardtail. And man, this turned out to be a more challenging search than I ever thought. It seems like 90% of all strats have a trem bridge and only a few have hardtail bridges, either high-end custom builds or cheap starter guitars. I scrounged a second-hand market for a hardtail strat and eventually my luck came through with this, a 2002 Squire Bullet Strat. Red body, black pickguard, love the look, with a single humbucker in the bridge. All you Blink-182 fans would resonate with this guitar. So yeah, it seemed like I checked off all the requirements on my list, but in the days leading up to purchasing this, I did a little more research, and it turns out that certain Squire bullets during this time either have HSH routing, HSS routing, or just a single humbucker routed. And which one did I have? Well, take a look. Moment of truth. One, two, three. God damn it! Yeah, just my luck. So yeah, that's another no-go. So, I did some more research and thanks to some YouTube commenters, they said that the current line of Squire Bullet Strats are hardtail. And it just so happened that they were on sale at the time. In terms of the look, it was either black or Fiesta Red, both with white pick guards, both classic looks. Obviously, I have a thing for red guitars, but to me, Fiesta Red isn't a real red. It's a weird in-between color where it looks red under certain lighting and can also look orange or pink under different lighting too. It kind of looks like raw salmon. 
but you can't go wrong with black, so that's what I went with. So there we have it, all of my requirements met. It's a hardtail strat, I'm okay with the look, it wasn't exactly dirt cheap, but it wasn't expensive, and at least it's an untouched, brand new guitar to work with. And even though I bought the SSS version, I saw from YouTube reviews that this has HSH routing, and lo and behold, it does. Now let's talk about all the parts and upgrades that went into this guitar, and there are lots of them. First, locking tuners. You guys know how I feel about locking tuners by now, so of course, I'm gonna install them. Next, roller string trees. Same thing, I'm big on these. For the nut, just like my telly from last time, I'll be installing a Tusk XL nut, this time in black, and also with more challenges than last time, which I'll touch upon later. Locking strap buttons, the same that I installed on my telly, these allow me to easily pop on and off the same strap across multiple guitars. Black input jack to match with the other black hardware. Black pick guard to complement the hardware and the body. For the pickups, as you know, I installed DiMarzios on my telly and I'm really happy with them, so I decided to give them another try, but different types for this strat. For the neck and middle, I have two cruiser necks. I knew I wanted noiseless single coils, and while I wasn't sure what to get at first, I came across a great deal for these two and jumped on them. They're DiMarzio's lowest output strat size humbuckers, which are meant to sound like single coils, so I decided to give them a shot. For the bridge, I got a fast track T. I had my eye on this pickup for quite some time, and since I got these cruisers, I figured this would be a good match for them. Similarly, it has the lowest output of all of DiMarzio's rail tele pickups, and it's said to still have a good amount of twang while being able to handle high gain, so that fit the bill of what I was looking for. To complement these pickups, I got red pickup covers. These are specific to DiMarzio's pickups, so there aren't any other alternatives other than buying the official product, and I got these on Reverb.com. I also got these red knobs on Amazon to add a little more red to the guitar. You'll also see a red control switch tip here as well, and my plan was to use it, but eventually I went with a chrome switch tip. I'll touch upon this later. As for the switch itself, I went with an official Fender 5-way switch. I wanted to use a good one instead of a cheap import switch, but also it's more in line with most wiring diagrams that I come across. For the pots, I went with a 500k for the volume and 250k for the tone. This should be the right combo for these pickups. It'll make them sound bright and twangy, but not overly bright. You may be wondering why I have only two pots here. Personally, I've never understood with strats why there are two tone knobs for three pickups, and I can't imagine a scenario where you'd want different tone settings on different pickups. But I do believe there are uses for a tone control, so for this guitar, I would have a master volume and a master tone. Also, both of these pots are push-pull for added functionality. The first thing, which I mentioned, is for the Gilmore mod, which, when pulled, would activate either the neck or the bridge pickup, which then allows for a total of seven pickup positions. As I mentioned before, I really want that sixth position where the neck and the bridge pickups are running in parallel, similar to the middle position on a telly. The second functionality is splitting the coils. Now, this isn't necessary because the pickups I'm installing are low output humbuckers that are meant to sound like single coils. Even the luthier I mentioned before said this split coil sound will be extremely thin, but either way, I'm still curious to hear how they'll sound. And with only one tone knob, that leaves an extra hole in the pickguard, so I'll be installing a kill switch. It's just for effect, it's totally gimmicky, totally unnecessary, but hey, let's go for it. I'll be using a momentary switch, and I picked out this arcade button. And yes, all of these implementations mean there is a lot of electronic work to be done. It won't be straightforward. And finally, as you know, the number one most unique, most eye-catching mod to this guitar is the Telebridge on a Strat. And to do this, I need to carve out a space on the pickguard. This will require careful measuring, placement, and cutting. It goes without saying that this is a highly unusual custom mod that has no prior precedence, at least by any major guitar company, so this is as DIY as it gets. At the outset of this build, I thought that this would be the biggest challenge, but now I tell my past self to hold that thought. But enough talk, let's get down to business. Now, my whole process for this whole build 
may follow the same order as my previous tally mods. So if you've watched my previous videos, there will be some redundancies. I started by taking the strings off, removed the neck, removed the tuners, string trees, the nut, the pit guard, while keeping all the electronics intact, removed the input jack, the bridge, and the strap buttons. The inside cavities had really rough, unsanded bottoms with wood fibers and splints sticking out, so I tried my best to smooth them out however I could. Then I desoldered the input jack, just in case I'd be selling it one day. Next came upgrading parts on the neck, mainly the headstock. I started by fitting the Tusk XL nut by sanding it down to size, and without putting too much thought into it at the time, I glued it in place. We'll revisit this later. For the tuners, I had to drill new holes on the back, not too difficult. For the string trees though, the screws they provided were too long and too big, so I had to shorten the screws by clipping the ends off with a plier and drilling bigger holes on the headstock. Okay, time for the tally bridge. The most important thing was to find the right spot to install the bridge, and to do that, I installed the neck back on, put the pit guard in place, and slapped some painter's tape on to make reference lines if needed. My intuition told me that I had to check something in advance and I was right. At first, I thought about simply lining up the pickup space on the tally bridge with the space where the bridge pickup would go on the strap pit guard while seeing if the tally pickup would fit within the pickup cavity and just as I suspected, it wouldn't. So I had to measure a spot on the tape with the bridge and pickup mounted and as best as I could, I marked it down. I positioned it as far back as I could so the pickup would fit within the cavity but without touching the edge of the cavity. I hope you guys are following what I'm saying. It was further away from where the strat bridge pickup would be on the pick guard so the end result is the distance between the bridge and middle pickups is shorter than the space between the middle and the neck pickups. But this also applies for Nashville tellies so I guess I just found out the reason why this is. Anyways, once I was confident I had the right spot for the bridge, I marked it down on the tape, clamped the pick guard down on the table, and began sawing the cutout. And believe me, I tried my best to make sure it was the right place for the bridge, making sure it was lined up down the middle and straight without any angle. The end result wasn't 100%, but I ran with it. As for sawing this cutout, it wasn't easy. It was a rough ghetto job using this coping saw and it was very awkward to do, but I took my time with it. After sawing the cutout, the bridge still didn't fit, so I filed and sanded the space down. It took quite a bit of time, but once I was able to fit the bridge, I mounted the bridge pickup back on and screwed the pick guard back on the body. I had to make sure that everything fit in place. As for the exposed holes from the previous strap bridge, I simply added three extra pick guard screws to cover them up. I positioned the tally bridge with the pickup mounted, then drilled the four holes to finally secure the bridge in place. Everything seemed to look okay so far. And by the way, right now you're seeing a black tele bridge, but you may have noticed the finished guitar has a chrome bridge. More on this later. Next came copper shielding, but I'll go through this really quickly as I'll touch upon this again in a later step. I started off by removing the silver tape that was already on the new pickguard, even though I didn't have to. Then I applied new copper tape on the entire thing. I went edge to edge, but as I've learned since, you really only need to cover the holes for the pots and the pickups. Then I spent a shitload of time taping everything else I could. The input jack, and especially the pickup cavities. I used tons and tons of tape. It was a very ghetto job, but again, we'll touch upon this later in the video. Next was wiring everything from scratch, and boy oh boy, this was an unforgettable ordeal. Full disclosure. Even though I filmed almost everything when it came to wiring, the vast majority of it is a lot of back and forth between wiring and soldering everything, only to find out that certain things weren't working. There was a lot of troubleshooting and more than once, I undid all the wiring and started from scratch all over again. I'm not gonna waste anyone's time with things that have nothing to do with the end results, so I'll be showing you only the most relevant content during this step. But the bigger point I wanted to make is this. All this electrical work was the most challenging part of this build. Not the tally bridge and the pickguard carving, but this. It was so challenging that on multiple occasions I was on the brink of giving up. There were even moments that almost brought me to tears, but the fact that this video is up on YouTube where I'm presenting to you a successfully functioning guitar is an accomplishment in itself. And with all that said, let's continue. 
To start, one of the initial things I checked was fitting the momentary button to the pick guard, but it couldn't go all the way through, so I enlarged the hole using a circular file. With the red pickup covers, it wasn't quite staying in place for the bridge pickup, in this case the fast track T, so I decided to clip the ends off in the hopes that it would help. More on this later. The wiring diagram I followed is this, which I obtained from Demarzio's website. I've included a link in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. So like I said, my first attempt at wiring everything was unsuccessful. I can't tell you how disappointed I was. And crazy enough, it wasn't going to be the only time with this build. Soon after my first attempt, I got a multimeter in the hopes that I could help diagnose issues faster. Why I never invested in one earlier? I have no freaking clue other than I'm an idiot. So in kicking off my second attempt, I undid all the soldering and wiring I did in my first attempt and decided to start from scratch again. Full disclosure, I forgot to film the actual soldering work during the second attempt, so what you're seeing right now is footage from the first attempt. But a lot of the work I'm doing here is similar, so you'll get an idea of what was involved. I'm also going to be talking about various things I came across along the way, and not in any particular order, so apologies in advance if my presentation here seems disorganized. One of the issues I had the first time around was the excess amount of wires I had with the pickups. If you have too much excess wire, it becomes hard to fit everything in the cavities and you may not even be able to screw your pick guard back on, amongst other issues. When you buy third party pickups, they always give you more wire than you need, so it's up to you to determine how much excess to cut off. This is risky because if you cut off too much, you could be potentially screwed, especially if you cut too close to the pickup itself. But I had no choice, so you can see me do it here. When examining all the parts and wires, it turns out that my first attempt may have failed because of one simple but crucial mistake. I had the 5-way selector switch upside down, meaning I was soldering wires to the wrong lugs. So if you're ever wiring from scratch without any reference, pay close attention to that. So here's the fully wired pick guard at the end of my second attempt. You can see how convoluted the whole thing looks because of all the numerous wires and lugs involved with these two push-pull pots and the functionality I was aiming for. Afterwards, I spent a little more time doing some minor touch-up work, testing with the multimeter, did an audio test, and it still wasn't 100% successful. I had to retrace all my wires, redo some connections, and remember what I said about cutting the pickup wires too close to the pickup? Yeah, I almost accidentally cut one of the wires completely off and could have ruined the entire pickup. That would have been catastrophic. So to fix the issue, I had to extend the shortened cable with a jumper cable. Basically, daisy chain a few cables to make a longer connection. It was tricky, but I managed to do it. Afterwards, I did another sound test and kept getting noise. The reason for that noise was because the five-way switch and some of the wires were being squished within the pick guard. In particular, the 5-way switch was touching the bottom of the cavity, which made contact with the copper tape, and that's what was causing the staticky noise. I realized the best thing for the guitar was to remove the copper tape to eliminate any possibility of that noise. So as painful as it was for me, I ripped out all of the copper tape, which I didn't film. All that effort, all that time, all that tape was a complete waste in the end. But after all these fixes, I did another sound test, and it seemed to be good, finally. Before moving on, a few minor things to briefly mention. Remember the pickup cover for the bridge pickup? It turns out that it just kept falling off no matter what, because unlike the Strat pickups where it can be secured with the pickguard screw, there's nothing to hold the cover in place on the Tele bridge. So I added glue to the inside of the cover, and now it's not going anywhere. The only downside is, it'll be a real hassle if I ever decide to change this pickup cover, though I think it's very unlikely I would. Also, I installed the locking strap buttons. They're the same that I installed on my telly in my previous video. This allows me to easily attach and detach the same strap to my guitars in less than a second, without making any changes to the locks on the strap. Finally, I polished the body and reattached the neck. Then I put the red knobs on the two pots, and for the pickup selector switch, I used a black tip here. I mentioned before that I wanted to use a red tip originally, but it didn't fit. The hole for the red tip is 3.5mm in length, which is commonly the width of the pole found on cheaper import switches, but the one that I have here is an official fender switch, commonly found on American strats, and the width here 
is 4.9 millimeters. I tried to enlarge the hole on the red tip as you can see here, but it didn't really help. Yeah, more wasted time and effort. The black tip that I put on here came with the fender switch, so it was guaranteed to fit. So I put it on for now, but we'll revisit this again. I say that a lot, don't I? Moving along, I decided it was time to string this up, but as I was doing so, I realized the new nut that I installed was way too low. The black Tusk XL nut was too short, height-wise, so it made the strings way too close to the fingerboard, so much so that it was unplayable. But I did some digging around and found these copper shims on Amazon that could be used to raise the height of the nut, so I decided to give them a chance. So these are the shims. The width of these shims was perfect, almost like they were specifically made for fenders and squires, but I would have to size them accordingly, lengthwise. I simply used a plier to hold one end of the shim in place and bent it back and forth until it broke off on its own. Afterwards, I straightened out the end with a hammer and used a small file to smooth it out. I glued the shim in the slot using wood glue, and surprisingly, I was able to bond the nut with the shim using wood glue as well. I didn't expect them to stick all that well, so just to be safe, I held the two down overnight using a capo, and the end result was pretty damn solid. And it still is. There was one last minute change I decided to make to this build, and that was the bridge, or more specifically, the bridge color. After staring at the guitar long enough, I realized that I needed to make this guitar stand out more. Normally, I'm a big fan of black hardware, but in the case of this guitar, I had a black bridge beside a black pickguard on a black guitar. The whole purpose of this guitar is to showcase the Tele bridge on a Strat, and this black on black on black doesn't make it obvious enough. So I decided to change this bridge from black to chrome. So here I'm uninstalling the black and installing the chrome. Both bridges are the exact same brand and the same model, the only difference is the color. Also, to complement the chrome bridge, I switched the selector switch tip from black to chrome, so the bridge wouldn't be the only chrome color piece on the guitar. Okay, with all the mods done, it was time for the last few steps. After stringing it up, next came filing down the nut slots. I won't get into too much detail here, but as I mentioned in my previous video, this is such a key step in getting the guitar to play and feel just the way you like. But it's a bloody tedious task. After that, I did all the other little things involved in a complete guitar setup to get it to play and sound the way I like. And let me tell you, I spent a lot of time making all kinds of fine tune adjustments, trying to find my perfect feel on this guitar. So here you go. The end result, the modded guitar, Tele bridge on a Strat, the DiMarzio pickups with the custom wiring work, the upgraded black hardware. What an ordeal it was to get to this point. Okay, so now it's time to hear what the guitar sounds like. It's what you've all been waiting for and you could argue it's the only thing that matters in the end. And like most of my videos, it's a before and after sound test. You'll get to hear what the original stock guitar sounded like versus what it sounds like after all the mods. In addition are a few comparisons with my actual Tele so you can hear how much of a difference the Tele bridge and pickup make on the Strat. Here's the signal chain. All settings and parameters within the chain remain exactly the same across all samples to highlight in the most accurate manner the difference these mods make. The pickups will make the biggest difference, no question, but everything else still adds to the overall sound in some way. Here we go.
Okay, so you all probably have your own opinions on what you've just heard and seen throughout the video. So now I'm going to touch upon a whole bunch of different aspects related to this guitar and answer some questions that I had at the very beginning as a means of concluding this whole experimental build in this video. On the whole, the guitar is better than what it was originally. I mean, of course it would, I put a few hundred dollars worth of upgrades into it and tweaked it to my liking, but it still retains much of its original character and feel. It's not like I can transform an entry-level guitar into a pro-level one, but it's definitely not the same as what it started off as. The main catch with this strat is the inclusion of the Tele Bridge, so do I get the feeling that I'm playing a Tele in a strat? Not really all that much, to be honest. Objectively, this guitar is still 95% strat. The body is a strat, then the neck feels like a strat neck. The only thing that's different is the bridge. That said, the bridge does add a bit of uniqueness to the strat. For one thing, my right hand is resting on the tele bridge, and this is the ashtray style bridge, so you can feel the raised edges. It gives me that familiarity in my right hand when I play a tele. It also feels a bit different since my hand rests on the tele bridge and the bridge is closer this way as opposed to the strat where the bridge is further back. Again, I talked about this earlier in the video. Not necessarily a good or a bad thing, it's just different. I would say though, one downside is the proximity of the volume knob. It's too close to the bridge here and there have been times my hand nudges the knob a little and I inadvertently decrease my volume. So it's something I have to pay a little more attention to when I'm playing, even though really I shouldn't have to in the first place. Does this sound different from before? Well, yeah, of course it would, but at least I know this is solely due to the pickups. Note that I say it sounds different. I can't necessarily say it sounds better because tone is largely a personal preference. But when it comes to the inclusion of the Tele Bridge, the whole purpose of this build, the bridge pickup does sound like a Tele to my ears, but how much of that is influenced by the pickup and how much of that is influenced by the bridge? I can't say since I can't independently test it too. They're both intertwined in this case. But to me, I do get a Tele tone in the bridge while getting Strat tones in the other positions. As for the neck and bridge pickup position that I wanted, it's there, but it's a little less pronounced on this strat when compared to my Tele. I'm guessing it has something to do with the electronics functioning differently compared to an actual Tele, but this pickup combo is present if I need it. So yeah, if I need this particular sound during, say, a live set or a rehearsal, I'd go with it. But if I'm recording in the studio, there's a good chance I'll reach for my Tele first. As for the coil splitting function, yeah, maybe that luthier had a point. They do sound really thin. Depending on the pickup position and the tone, they can be unusable at times. I guess one way I could use them is as a boost or a cut during a live performance, but definitely I can't see myself using them in the studio. Or very often at all. As for the pickups themselves, on the whole, I think they're good. They are noiseless, but because they're technically humbuckers, I do find them a little too compressed for my taste and they lack some dynamics and that high-end sparkle that you expect on traditional single coils. But these were designed to emulate single coils and in that regard, they do sound pretty convincing. For the cruisers, I personally don't find them, for lack of a better word, stratty enough for my taste, but that's entirely on me. So I'd say if you're looking for a traditional Strat tone with the sparkly, bell-like quality that Strats are known for, maybe consider something else before these. But if, say, you have an HSS guitar and you've got a super hot humbucker in the bridge and want to complement it with single coils that can keep up, then I'd say these are good pickups to round out the combo. Also, I would say if you've got a Strat with three single coils and want a bridge pickup that's just got a little bit more compression for a thicker tone, particularly for solos, then I'd say a Cruiser pickup might be a good one to try while you retain your more traditional single coils in the middle and the neck. And note that there are two Cruisers, the neck and the bridge. In this case, it probably makes more sense to go with the bridge. As for the Fast Track T, I like this pickup. It doesn't sound as twangy when compared to a more traditional Tele Bridge pickup, as you heard during the sound test, but 
there's still a good amount of twang to make it sound like a telly while having that compression and sustain you want in a humbucker. I wouldn't say it's heavy enough for metal, but I do think it has good sustain for solos and can handle mid-gain stuff like classic rock, alternative type stuff. Now over the course of this build, there were some miscellaneous things that I came across and I think they're worth mentioning in the hopes that they could serve as FYIs or helpful tips for others. First, I believe Fender is trying to crack down on third parties making replacement parts, particularly the ones you can purchase from Amazon. Remember the switch tip I mentioned before? That's one example. Here's another. These red pickup covers came with the tip and the red knobs I ended up using. You'd think that I could just swap them with the covers on the stock pickups, but it turns out that they don't all fit, as each of the pickups here are all different lengths. It seems like these pickup dimensions are a new standard with Fender, or at least on Squires. Want another example? How about tuners? Remember at the beginning I talked about this Affinity Strat? The tuners on that Strat are the 2-pin type, so it doesn't require any screw hole. I bought locking tuners on Amazon to upgrade them, but guess what? The pins don't line up. The stock tuners on this bullet strat are also the two pin style, and they also came up short as well. Again, I believe this is Fender's way of deterring people from using products that aren't theirs, or should I say, aren't licensed by them. So Fender, if by some miraculous chance you happen to be watching me right now, please don't do this. Make it easier for people to customize their guitars. In general, people like to take things and make it more their own, put their own personal stamp on it. Customizing things is fun, and this would encourage more people to gravitate towards Fender guitars. Make this a catch, a characteristic, a selling point to your guitars and your brand to encourage more sales. Make this a positive instead of a negative. And while I have your attention, any chance we could negotiate an endorsement deal? The second thing is regarding copper shielding. I was initially under the impression that copper shielding is a good thing regardless. I had success with it on my telly in my previous video, so I figured I couldn't go wrong this time, but it did. Ripping out all that tape was painful, but it got rid of the noise issue I had. So maybe, just maybe, Dylan Talk's tone was right. Copper shielding might be overrated after all. Third is something that I struggled with, mostly off camera, but I decided to just mention it here and not include it as its own section in this video, and that is the compensated saddles on the Tele Bridge. During setup, I was having a hard time getting the guitar to play well, and at times, the strings were too loose and too jangly and they kept slipping around on the saddles, meaning they kept moving around. They wouldn't stay in place. I tried heavier string gauges to help with the jangliness, but it didn't make much difference. The solution was actually in the truss rod. I had to play around with it to find the right setting. But even after getting past that, it was difficult to achieve perfect intonation, even with these compensated saddles. Tele players will know exactly what I mean. Because of this, I may never go with a vintage ashtray style bridge ever again on a Tele. I get that it's more traditional and authentic in a vintage sense, but this lack of perfect intonation it triggers my perfect pitched ears, so I think I prefer a modern style bridge where I can adjust each of the individual six saddles. That said, I'm not changing anything on this guitar. It's final. And fourth, and this should come as no surprise, but with regards to the electronics, the more elaborate your functionality, the more complex and intricate your wiring becomes. Part of the challenge comes from working with tiny parts. For example, Humbucker wires are so damn thin and they're difficult to strip the insulation off of. Lugs on push-pull pots are also tiny. You put two and two together and it becomes a challenge to work with all these tiny parts in a small space, even for someone with small hands like myself. And when you've got multiple functions across numerous pots and pickups, that means more tiny wires, more tiny lugs, more soldering in tight spaces, and more wires to troubleshoot if things aren't working as expected. So keep all of this in mind. So to conclude everything, two big questions. Would I ever do this again? Hell no. If I want a Strat with a Tele bridge or any non-Tele guitar with a Tele bridge, it's probably best to do a custom build from scratch. 
Yes, that means more money, but it also means a lot less hassle without all the hacky shit you witnessed me do. For those who are considering this mod, would I recommend it? Well, I can't stop you. It's totally doable, but I will say if you do, do your very best to find the right position for the bridge. Make sure it's perfectly straight and bang on where it needs to be. And when it comes to carving out the space on your pick guard, it's probably best to use a machine, like a bandsaw, instead of doing it by hand. Or, like I said, you might be better off just doing a custom build from scratch. All that said, this guitar turned out to be a success in the end. I learned a lot throughout this entire build. The fact that I overcame so many obstacles may be an even greater success than the guitar itself. And the end result is a very playable guitar that sounds good and it's now one of my go-tos at the moment. And I also hope that I never do anything this radical again, but who knows, I've contradicted myself before. All right, so what did you all think? Would love to hear from all of you. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you stuck around for the entire video. By all means, please leave a comment, give this video a thumbs up, share this with whomever, and most of all, click that subscribe button down below to stay on top of all my future videos. This is Tsunami Rad, signing off.